so we can come back together. So today, I'm only going to talk for a few moments, and we're going to actually break up into groups and go around tables and do fun things like that. So we have been talking about and the title of our series has been The Upside Down Kingdom. And really, here it is in a nutshell. The Upside Down Kingdom is about this. We tend to reduce our spiritual life to works and doing good and outside efforts. But Jesus wants our heart. Jesus wants relationship with us. Jesus wants face-to-face -face time with us. And he says, you think it's okay as long as you don't do these things. You think it's okay as, as, for instance, he goes, you think it's okay as long as you don't commit adultery. He goes, but I'm telling you that if you even look at a woman, it's not okay. So he's taking these major things and he's going, you think it's okay that you do it this way, but I'm telling you, and he brings it down or up to the heart. And then last week I talked about the secret place and he goes, you think it's okay. He didn't say this. I'm giving a paraphrase. You think it's okay just to go out and stand on a street corner and say your prayers and you think you look all spiritual and, and you know, all that in a box of rocks. What, what, what does that even mean? You know, it's like, you know, like bag of chips, like all that in a bag of chips. I don't even know what it means. I just say it. What else you got? All that in a bag of chips. But where'd I get box of rocks? Anyway. Is that even the correct saying? What is it? <laughs> but you know, all that and... What did you say? Tea. Tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, then. All right. I'm sorry, all of you new people who are visiting us. It's not like this usually. Okay, it is. So what Jesus was saying was he was going, you think that you're all that because you're standing on a street corner looking all spiritual. He goes, but I'm telling you, it's the secret place of the heart. And he says, and, and that heart there, the secret place rather, has the nuance of both the inner person, the heart, and also literally a closet, a secret place. And he's going, I'm not really interested in how good you sound in public, although he doesn't say that's wrong. That's an important part, public prayer when we come together. He goes, but I'm more concerned about the secret place of your heart. And by the way, I am with you always. And because we also know that in the epistles, it talks about praying without ceasing. And so you go, well, how do you do that? Because God is present in every moment and is listening to every word. And that he invites us into living a life of prayer. Gregory of Nyssa, who was a church father in 331, it says this, the goal of the virtuous way of life is to be known by God and to become his friend. This is true perfection, not to avoid a wicked life because we fear punishment, not to do good because we hope for rewards as if cashing in on that virtuous life by some business-like arrangement. We regard falling from God's friendship as the only thing dreadful. And we consider becoming God's friend the only thing worthy of honor and desire. This is the perfection of life. That's a church father. So last week again, we saw Jesus inviting us into this friendship through the secret life. And then we also talked about if we are saying our words, a lot of words, that he goes on in this next verse and just going, if you, if you talk and talk and talk and talk like the Gentiles, you're not going to be heard any more than if you just say, help me. One word works just as well as many words. So let's look at our text this morning. And I want to read. I'm going to read from last week, and then we're all going to read together. So he says this, whenever you pray, be sincere and not like the pretend love the attention they receive while praying before others in the meetings and on street corners. Believe me, they've already received their reward in full. 
But whenever you pray, go into your inmost chamber and be alone with Father God, praying to him in secret. And your Father who sees all you do will reward you openly. When you pray, there's no need to repeat empty phrases, praying like those who don't know God, for they expect God to hear them because of their many words. There is no need to imitate them since your Father already knows what you need before you ask him. Pray like this. So I want us all just to take a moment, and I want us to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Let's stand while we do it. You can pray it either in the King James, that you may have learned it or whatever, but let's pray it together. So our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our trespasses, oh, daily bread. <laughs> Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You see how we, you can sit down. You see how we all know that prayer? We've all been taught it. I think before I ever even knew Jesus, I knew that prayer. You did too. Yeah, it's like everybody knows that prayer. It's such a common, common prayer. Well, it's something that's interesting about this prayer is that Jesus is also revamping this. Because this actually parallels the Kaddish and the 18 benedictions that were Jewish prayers in use in those forms in the synagogue worship of Jesus' time. I never knew that. So even in this, he was saying, okay, you all pray this every week in synagogue, but I'm telling you that I want you to pray this in your secret place. And instead of saying all of these words, like he was just saying, like the Gentiles and the pagans do, he goes, I just want you to trust God and to make this your prayer. It's very interesting. Don't use a lot of words. You don't have to stand on a street corner. Don't just do it in church. Bring it into your secret place and pray like this. In Luke, when the disciples went to Jesus and said, man, we're watching you pray. We want to pray like you. Tell us how to pray. And he gives them this prayer. He says, this is how you're supposed to pray. So this is what we're going to do today. We are so used to just looking at verses and going through them or saying them rote. But what do they actually mean? So I'm going to break us all up into groups around these tables. You're just going to move the chairs out. If you need to sit, go ahead and sit. And I want you to list 20 things that you see in the verse that's sitting on your table. So there are little papers there, and I want you to list 20. This is, this is what I love. Usually you can do 1 through 10 pretty quick. It's 1 through 20 that's really hard. Use your Bible apps. Go on the Internet. But go deeper into this verse that you have, what does this verse mean? Then we're going to do something else. So everybody break up, find tables, and elders, you're all going to, and interns, you're going to break up to different tables and kind of help organize it. And I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be about 10 per table, but go there and then I'm going to give more instructions. Okay. Okay, Barb, is that that one? Who's at that one? Go to that one. Right there. Does every table have about 10? Okay. Tony, are you setting up? Where's my Tony? Are you set, helping them set that up back there? Do they know how? Are they doing good? Okay, so everybody tune in to me for one minute. Thank you. One person turned and looked at me. Hallelujah. Okay, so everybody tuned in to me for a minute. 
First thing I want you to do is there are name tags on your table. Put your name on it, plop it on your shirt or what have you, and introduce yourself. Because I don't want anybody to think, assume that anybody is known. So put your name. Okay, and before you start that, is everybody listening? <laughs> Thank you, Sandy, who's at the sound. <laughs> All right, everybody, look, okay. So, you are going to do 20 things you see in this verse. You're going to use Bible apps. You're going to use every, every means you have, your Bible, whatever it is. And also, for all of you artists in the mix, one of your numbers can be a picture that somebody draws. Okay? So if you have an artist in your midst, one of your, one of your pictures can be that. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, it can be more than one. Yes, yes. Okay, you all ready? I'm going to give you 20 minutes to work together, one through 20. Let's start with your names. Does everybody know everybody? You all introduced yourself? Okay, so everybody go and say who your names are and then begin. Yes, you're writing the 20 things down on the newspaper. Twenty things you see in the verse, and it can just be words. You can look up Bible apps, whatever you need.
Okay, let me interrupt you for one minute. You have like seven minutes left, but one group is done, so I'm going to give the next, the next project. Out of those 20, which, good for you. Let everybody give, the, is, are they the first ones that are done? Oh, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Let's everybody give ourselves a hand, whoever got 20. Oh, oh, they got 30. Can anybody beat their 30? All right, just wanted to ask. Okay. So here's the next step. Out of those 30 or 20, whatever you have, what are your epiphanies? What is called a Kairos moment? Like you look at something, you're like, wow, I did not know that. Narrow it, that down to three. Three, light bulb goes off, Kairos moment, wow, never realized that about this verse. Three of those. Another piece.
All right, if you haven't started working on your Kairos, Epiphany, your, your light bulb going off, start working on that now, and you're going to do that for the next five minutes. All right, three minutes. Three minutes left. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, no, no, all right. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? How'd you all like that little exercise? Did you like it? 
How many, just by a raise of hands, did you, when looking a little bit deeper, did you have new insight or did it mean something a little bit deeper to you? See what happens when you raise, when you raise your hand. Oh my Lord. Do you see what happens when you pause and go deeper? And, and part of the reason, there's a method to my reasoning for doing this, is because when we just read the Bible and just go, look what it says, and we take it at face value, there are deeper nuances, there are deeper truths, if we will dig deeper. And it took, look at all the people here, looking at the verses, separate verses, right? And you all got different things, you all saw different ideas. Those of you who went on Bible apps and things added things. This truly is what God invites us to. It's not just reading our Bible, it's going deeper and saying, what does the word really say? What, what is it really speaking? And even spending time with just one verse, just one verse. I have not been able to get away from the second one in the Passion Translation, which is let the um, let the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. I just, it's just been living in me. Let the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. And I'm just staying there until I get everything out and the Lord goes, okay, move on. That's what we're called to. It's not just reading the Bible. It's going deep and it's communing with God through his word. So let's start with, I think you guys have the very first one. What's your verse? All right, so, so I that that you want to, and let me give you a, <laughs> yes, would you mind? Okay, now listen, I know that all of you are Bible scholars now. I do not be, I'm just going to invite you to share like a minute or two, not like a 25-minute sermon. All right. Okay. Can so, you stand, Sam? Yes, I can. Thank you. I'm able to. And can you read the Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Can you um, read the verse first? Yes. Thank you. Um, I will read, I'll just read the Passion Translation. So we had Matthew 6, 8. Which is, there is no need to imitate them, since your father already knows what you need before you ask him. Uh, so, our first, the most obvious thing was that God is all-knowing. So God, just, he knows what you need. He knows everything that's going on. He knows your heart. He knows the people around you. He knows all your circumstances. So that was, like, obvious, you know, that's very obvious uh, meaning. And then as we started discussing about the you know, what it means that he, he already knows what we need. Um, so we looked at for a little context from the previous verse, which says that the Gentiles would use empty phrases when they pray. Um, and so we took this verse invitation to be real and be yourself when you're praying, instead of just throwing out, you know, meaningless phrases that, you know, just for attention's sake or that you think it will fulfill something when God actually already knows what you need. Um, and so we, we said one of our other points was, what a relief that we don't need to use fancy words. Because, you know, I mean, I can speak for myself. I'm not great at that anyway. So, um, and so we actually had a few more than three kairoses. Well, well, okay, go ahead. But what was your, like, epiphany? What, what was yours as a group, like, you went wild? Yeah. So okay. So yes. It was the, so the, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna keep talking now. Just stop interrupting. No. Anyway, go ahead. The beautiful di or the beautiful picture that we drew up uh, to the turn of sideways. Thank you. So basically, um, to all of us in the group, it stood out that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tell me. So. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Like that. So we. Uh, Tracy brought up a great point of. To, to not pray as if your hands are closed, but pray with open hands, so that you can, you know, it's more of an open prayer, and you're receiving and also giving instead of just a closed hand kind of. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. So yeah, that was basically what stood up. Um,
which is that group over there, honey. I just want to say this, and I'm going to put it into your heads, but isn't it interesting that we have um, in the church developed like all of these different prayers and we talk about the 10 steps to get answered prayer. And I just saw online recently, like, hey, do you want your prayers answered? Well, this is how you do it. But when you read that, it goes, your father knows what you need before you ever, ever ask. And, you know, we, we constantly want to put God in this box of numerical, you know, um, rules and regulations. And he goes, I know what you need. Just come to me. And it doesn't, as they said, have to be fancy. So, okay, next group. Hi, good morning. Okay, Hi, tell so us your name. My name is Allison. Yeah, yeah. Hold it up, just hold it up. Okay. So you can tell I never use a microphone. Never. <laughs> All right, so our verse was Matthew 6, 9a. That told us to pray like this. Our Father dwelling in the heavenly realms. We landed on it being a relational piece. It is our Father. Ooh, we all can come to Him. We don't need an intermediary. We can just come to an intimate level. And then He's a living God because they identify that He's dwelling, which means He's currently alive. Wow. Trinity and the interaction of the Trinity. Um, and this, this was us. Is primary colors were a good symbol of the Trinity. I thought the primary colors were a good symbol of the Trinity because you can't make, you can't create primary colors. They're nice trends. But as the Trinity. As they mingle with each other, all those nuance, nuances of color are created, and the new colors are created when, uh, as they interact. Oh, Chris. That's my husband. Come on, baby. Yes. <laughs> Let the artist speak. Nice, Chris. Did I get to do something? Joe. Hi, Joe. 
So our verse was, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we felt that uh, the primary definition for that phrase was um, like a transformation into a good place or into a bad place, into a good place from, um, from heaven on to earth. But um, there was another definition when we went a little further. And I'm going to tell you a story real quick. So my brother's in the military. He was in Afghanistan. Um, he he and a few of his soldier friends um, took on fire, heavy fire, and uh, one of them were actually shot and killed. And uh, while they were on the mountain, he uh, was behind a rock and he prayed this prayer. So with that being said, um, we felt that in a desperate place we would say this prayer, and it also underlines like. Uh, definition of like, I need help, I need help in a, uh, in a time of need, you know. Amen. So that's what we came up with. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mario. We had, um, give us today our, uh, our daily bread, and our aha moment was that we can hold God forgiveness and had some discussion around that and um, one of the things we talked about was um, uh, unconditional um, and another word that came up was uh, clear um, so like you're clearing your debt oh. um, so we, we had a lot of discussion about debt and debtors um, you can picture debt and debtors as um, the cross um, the right side being the debt and the other side being the debtor So we talked about that. Um, nice. We have a, a, a great picture of this kind of displaying what we thought about clearing or cleaning, um, where <coughs> um, we're sweeping the dirt up and it turns into butterflies. Aww. Aww. Nice. Nice. I think we should all give Honey a hand for helping with the mic. <laughs> Yeah, just be careful with the speaker block with your body. Just, yeah, just stay behind the speakers, otherwise it'll go. Um, so, hi, I'm Allie, and our verse was, For you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. Amen. And I'm actually going to pass the mic to um, little Janice, um, because she just, she just did such a great job. Um, yeah, and what she brought out was really amazing, so. Beautiful. Um, so my two words was, he is, because in reading the scripture, it says, for thine is the kingdom and the power. Not that he has it, but he just is. Ooh. And so when, we, so when we are in the kingdom, we are a part of him. And we get, our source of power is him. Wow, 
like like Carol's word. Come on, resplendent, beautiful, nice. Thank you. It was going from something, so not evil, but going into the promises that God has for us. So we had an image of a person kind of putting their hand like, nope, not doing this, and walking this way. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of phrases that we felt kept coming through of truth of who God is, that he is trustworthy, he is always there, his love is eternal, he does not tempt us, he is directing our steps and he protects us, and all of that is the foundation upon which we are walking. And then that allows us to do what Kim really found in this passage, that we're choosing to leave all that's not of God so that we can enter into the promises he has for us all. section and just kind of pray over them. But this is my final thing, is when I was reading the commentaries, the commentary said these are not prayers that were meant um, to be prayed over people, but that they were meant to be personal. And once again, I disagree. And I'm like, that is not true. Because there's not a day that goes by that I don't say, let, let, the, let the glory of your name be the center on which Kaylee's life turns. Let the glory of your name be the center on which character turns. So, you know, let your kingdom come in Cheryl's life. Let your will be done. So these are prayers that we are called to pray not only for ourselves but over each other. Because, you know, I don't know what's going on in everybody's life, but God does. So when we take this simple prayer and we literally just put people's names into this prayer. Lord, lead them not into temptation. Lead, lead Tony, lead Diane, lead whoever, Sandy, not into temptation. But deliver them. Every time they face something evil, deliver them. So I just want us to practice this week as we go, inserting people's names that come to our hearts and praying this prayer for one another. Praying it over ourselves, praying it over our family. You know, I oftentimes will pray it over Cornerstone in general, but then people's names will start popping into my head, and I just think, okay, God, you want me to pray over them. Those prayer cards that we get, I bring those with me into my prayer time, and sometimes I just hold these cards and go, Lord, and just go through them and name the names. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in these lives. So I want us as a community to practice that this week. Just open that up and just pray over one another. Pray over Cornerstone. Pray over each other. Pray over your family, over your life. Amen? Amen. All right, so this is how we're going to close. We're going to say it one more time together. So let's all stand. And I want to remind everybody that we can part it slowly so we can meditate on it as we go. Thanks, Diane. So I do want to say this, um, we invite you to come back to prayer meeting, we'd love to have you all there, because like I said, we're going to pray these over, and the little points that everybody made will kind of be even markers that we're going to pray over whatever, whatever's on our hearts, so we're going to put those around the room, and um, Tuesday night prayer starts at 7, Wednesday is our community dinner. And our uh, recovery meeting, we invite you to that community dinners around 6.15, recovery meetings at 7. We have ESL Monday nights and Thursday nights. And we also have Digging Deep on Saturday mornings. And I believe that's it. Yes, honey? Again? Men's Fellowship Breakfast this Saturday at 9 o'clock in the gym. I uh, want to invite all the men to come out. Good.
Did all the men hear that? 15th of February, 9 a.m. in the gym. All right, beautiful. Saturday. All right, so men, Saturday, 9.15? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. February 15th. February 15th, all right. Okay, forget everything we just said. Let me say it again. Between honey and me, we're not doing so well today. I gotta get up earlier now. All right, 7.30, Saturday, men's breakfast. Beautiful. All right, let's say this together, and then let's go. Let's pause, come together, center ourselves. Let's everybody fix our eyes on Jesus. And when we say our Father, we are really saying ours, all of us here. So let's start. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name.